Yeah, so, yeah, I'm Luca Pinello. I'm a postdoc in UN lab. So today we will learn how we can learn chromatic state from chip seek data. And I hope at the end of the talk you will be an expert on chromatic So, um, So this is the outline of the talk. So before learning chromatic states, you know, the, the question is like, why do we want to, you know, learn chromatic states? And we will talk briefly, just briefly, about instant modification combinatorial pattern. And then, you know, I will present you the main idea on how you can segment the genome in chromatin state. And, and finally, we will see how you can run chromic and MEM step by step. And, um, and finally, I'll show you other methods that are available to, you know, to call chromatin states. So I want to say that you know, in the ENCODE website, there is a, a Word document that I suggest you to download. And uh, so with Chromich and MEM, they provide a, a toy example. So you can, you know, also in your machine, you can run this example. And you know, in this document, you have all the instructions to run this toy example. And you know, in a normal computer, takes just 10 minutes. So, so I, don't, I don't have to give a, a, an introduction because you know, we have already been uh, talk about epigenetic and, and chromatin structure and how epigenetic influence um, gene expression. So one you know, key idea that you know, just briefly is like that we have different histone modification that are associated with different functional regions. For example, we have some marks that are usually associated with an answer, some marks that are usually associated with promoters, or, or with repressed region. So now, I mean, also this is something I don't, I don't need to explain, because we saw already in the previous tutorial how we can get um, um, tracks from histone modification through chip seek, and we saw how you can you know, align this data and get some tracks genome-wide. And usually, you know, having these tracks, you know, we see that there are some enriched and, and regions. And, uh, you know, usually what people do, um, sorry, so you, you call peaks, right? And this is approach is, you know, uh, really helpful if you don't have too many drugs. So when you have, you know, many different histone modification, you can still call peaks. But the problem is like, it's really hard to combine all this information, right? And another point to keep in mind is, is that the histone modifications are not independent. So they, they are kind of redundant, so they can share some information. So the, the challenge is like, if I give you this set of trucks, right, what can we learn from this? So the idea is like, if we can summarize somehow this information in a more succinct way, maybe you know, it's easier to explore you know, this, um, uh, th this particular uh, uh, state. So now, this is a problem that many people try to solve. So now the, the Chromich and MEM, that is a tool developed by Jason Ernest and Manolis Kerlis, is one of the most popular. So that's why I want um, today to introduce this tool. So now, if you read the, the definition of Chromich and MEM, it can be a little bit scary. So you say, it's a Java program for the learning and analysis of chromatin states using a multivari multivariate hidden Markov model, the explicitly model that observe combination of marks. Seems scary, but in reality, it's super simple. So in practice, when we talk about chromatin states, essentially what we are trying to do is like, we are trying to find combination of histone modification and try to assign a name that is meaningful and you know, correspond to the functional region. So, so for example, in this table that is from the original paper, you see that you know, the rows are chromatin states. And these are the names. So you have active promoter, weak promoter, inactive poise promoter, strong enhancer, and so on. And the columns here are the histone modification that they use to call this chromatin state. So now you see that if you, you know, go row by row, you see that different combination of histone modification correspond to different functional regions. So now one thing that, you know, I want to say now, and this is important to keep in mind, whatever model you run using histone modification, 
will not give you this light bulb. So there is no model, right? So one, 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 keep, one thing to keep in mind is like you run your model, right? And you will get one table like this. So then you have to you know, assign labels to these states. And the way you know, to do this is like to, for example, using other annotation, trying to get some value. So for example, if you see that one state is really a rich uh, at the TSS, probably is a, a promoter state. But you know, again, the goal is we want to segment the genome into biological meaning, meaningful units. So now, if, you, if we take a look at uh, the output of the Gromich MM, so the input are a set of chip seq for different histone modification. The output is a segmentation of the genome. That means you know, that for each region of the genome, you can assign a label or a color. So, in this picture, what, uh, what I'm showing you are the segmentation for different cell types. So each one of these rows is a different cell type. So you have H1, K562, and so on. And the colors represent the, the chromatin states. So now, what you, can, what you can see is like you kind of summarize main information of all you know, these system modification in just one track. And this is really helpful when you compare multiple cell lines. Because then you can see that, for example, in this region, you know, the cell lines are more similar, but, but here you have a lot of things going on, right? So now if you uh, look more carefully here, you see that to obtain these tracks, you actually use all the, you know, all the histone modification. So now each row here uh, corresponds to the original input that you use to call these states. And here, you know, I'm showing you only four of these cell types that you have here. And you see that, you know, for example, here you have, you know, these marks that, you know, this repressive, this, uh, um, this mark here that is present in these two cells but is not present in the other cell. So you have a lot of comparison to do if you want to, you know, look track by track. But if you look now in, the, in this, uh, this representation, it's much easier to compare, you know, these, uh, these different cell types, the chromatic states. So, is this clear, or you know, there is any question up up to now? Okay. So, yeah, let's move to the to the second part. So now, I, I think you know, I, I proved to you that you know, it's really you know, um, uh, useful to segment the genome in chromatic states. So now. Many people say, okay, this is really nice, right? But I want to do, to run Chromich MM on my, own, on my own data or to some data that I downloaded from ENCODE. Because, you know, from ENCODE, we, we have so many data that we can get for free. So, but not always we have, you know, the, the Chromich MM segmentation. So in the, in the document that, you know, uh, you can download from the um, uh, page for the meeting, I, I'm, I'm saying you need to, I mean, in order to run Chromic MM, you need uh, essentially just Java. And many of you, if you have a Mac, you have Java already installed. And then you need to download the Chromic MM software. So many people during, you know, these two days ask me, okay, how can I install this uh, Chromic MM? So since it's a Java program, you don't need to install anything. You just decompress this, uh, this zip file somewhere and please remember where you uh, decompress. And then if you go to that folder, you will have uh, everything to run the, the program. And we will go you know, step by step on how to do that. But many times, you want to run the Chrome HMM on your own data. So what do you need to do that? So you need essentially uh, aligned chipsy uh, data sets for different system modification. So, we saw uh, already some pipelines, but essentially, you know, uh, let's say you have some uh, raw reads. You align these raw reads to get an aligned file. Usually, it's a BAM file. And then, you know, the only thing to remember is you, you, require, uh, you need uh, another tool that is called BAT tools because uh, Chrome HMM doesn't take in input uh, um, BAM file, but instead, well, uh, instead, instead uh, you know, it, um, uh, takes an input bad file. 
So with this tool if, that is called bad tools, you can easily convert any BAM file to, to bad. So now in terms of the workflow, so what, what, you know, these are the steps that usually, you know, you, uh, you perform to, to get the chroma display. So the first thing is like you need to get chip seek uh, data uh, for different system modification. So one question is like which system modification do I need? So, I mean, there are different, you know, options, but I suggest you, if you go to the epigenomic roadmap, they selected the five system modifications. So you can use this uh, five system modification if you want to design a new experiment. And the advantage of doing that is that they have already a trained uh, in the Marco mod, a Chrome HMM model. So you don't have to retrain your model and it will be really easy to compare with the epigenomic roadmap. So the second step after you have the data, you need to align again to a, referen a reference genome. And please be sure you know, that you remember which reference genome you're using because then you need this when you will run the Chrome HMM. So, so at this stage, you probably have a BAM file. So now you need to convert again to a bad a bad format, and then internally, four, five, and six. This is happening inside the Chrome HMM. so it will uh, bin and binarize the tracks. We will see this in a, min in a minute. It will train a model, and it will infer the states. And finally, I will give you, you know, some idea on how you can interpret the output. So now I will go, you know, step by step. So in terms of aligning, this is not the main point of, of the talk, but you know, just the basic idea. You have a FASTQ file that usually you get from your Illumina machine. You have you know, your favorite aligner that can be Bowtie, BWA, or, or Star, and you get a BAM file. Or you know, much easier, since we have you know, the, this nice encode portal, you can just go to the encode portal and download a, a bunch of data and you know, play with this data. So, this, this, is, this is a step that is really important. Many people get stuck here because you know, they say, oh, I need to run the commission MAM, but you know, it doesn't take my BAM file. So to convert you know, from this BAM file to a bad file, and this bad file essentially contains you know, the same information of this BAM file, essentially the aligned reads, you need uh, to, to run this command. So for each of your BAM file, OK? You, you need to run this command. So let's assume you know, that you have this BAM file that is called cell one mark one dot BAM. So to convert this in a bad file, you just need uh, to run this command. So you have bad tools, BAM to bad, that means that we want to convert this BAM file to a bad file. The input file, and then you know, we redirect the output to uh, the output file. And you have to remember where you're putting uh, all these uh, bad files, OK? So, and please put all in the same folder, because Chrome HMM needs to have all the files in the same folder. So now, the first step of Chrome HMM is like a, what they call the binarization of the tracks. So this step, essentially, if you have multiple tracks, right, for these uh, Easton marks, First, you, you need to decide the resolution. So what they do, they divide the genome in bins, and you know, the default option is 200 base pair. So essentially, you, know, you are dividing the genome in this bin. And then you know, where you have you know, a strong signal, you will put a one. No, you, Chrome HMM will put a one. So at the end of, of this step, you will get uh, these tracks that are you know, what they call binarized tracks, where you have one if the histone is present and, and zero otherwise. So to do that, what you need to do? So let's assume that you put all your data uh, in, this, uh, in this folder. So you, all, your bet, all your BAM file that you converted, the previous step, let's assume, are in this folder. So to run this step, you need uh, to call from a ter you open a terminal, you say Java, and then this option here is to allocate the memory. Of, of your machine. Essentially, it's telling how much memory Java can use on your machine. So if you have many marks, you want to, you, to increase this, uh, this number here, OK? So another thing to keep in mind is like if you're using Java 32-bit, 
this, you know, you cannot go more than this number. So if you want to run in many marks, be the, uh, please double check that you have Java 64 bit. Otherwise, it will, you know, fail. And, and then here we, we are calling the main file Chrome HMM. And this is when you decompress the folder, you will see that you have this file inside that folder. And then Chrome HMM uh, has a set of commands that you can use. So you, you need uh, to call binarize bad. And this is will uh, you know, perform the operation that I just described to you before. And this B, 200, means that we want to segment the genome in, in 200 base pair. But you can change this number if you want. And then this Chrome size AG18. So this is a folder that you have already in the Chrome HMM package. And these are essentially these files contain the, the size of each chromosome. And you know, AG18 should match with the um, genome that you use in the alignment. So otherwise, you know, the result will be totally useless. So please double check you know, the disease match in your aligned file, especially when you download from the encode portal. And then what you need to do is to write a file that you know, they call cell mark file. This can be any you know, name. So inside this file, you will put different labels. So you need, the, you know, you have one row for each, for each track, for each bad file. And the first, you know, the first entry is like the, a label for the, for the cell type, for example, cell one. And then you, you need to input a label for the mark that may be, uh, for example, A3, K4, monometylation. Or, you know, you can put any name, but, you know, you should use, you know, the, the name of the, of the mark. And then, finally, you can put the bad file that you converted in the previous step. And if you, if, uh, you have an uh, input for your chip seek, you can put here. And, and as you can see, this is shared usually for all the, the tracks for the same cell type. Another thing you know, to keep in mind is like you can put data for multiple uh, cell types in the same file. So this means that you will learn you know, a model using all the data together. And this is something that you should do. If you have you know, multiple cell types, you should you know, not learn a model in each one. Otherwise, it will be difficult to, to compare. And finally, the last, uh, the last parameter is like the output folder. So where the Chrome HMM will store these uh, uh, binarized tracks. So just, you know, so this step will do essentially this, just, you know, just to, to be sure we are on the same page. Any question on this first step? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't have to decide. Oh, yes. So the question is like, do I have to select a threshold when we binarize this data? So internally, you know, they, they select a threshold for you, and it's based on a Poisson uh, process. So, but you don't have to specify any threshold. They will do this, you know, calculation for you, and you will get automatically the binarized tracks. Yes. Yeah, you can run on Windows, actually. Yeah, you can run on Windows. So if you have Java, you can run. The only thing that is tricky on Windows is like uh, these bad tools. Uh, you know, you need some compiler to, to install bad tools. But there is a, a nice project. It's called uh, Cygwin that you can download. And you can, you know, compile these bad tools inside Cygwin. So you can solve the, all the conversion inside Cygwin, and then you can use, you know, the normal terminal. Yeah. So, um, I have a question. <clears throat> Do we need to use only uniquely aligned reads, or if the reads gets aligned to multiple places, will that interfere with the Chrome uh, HMM's uh, uh, calculations? So usually people, they first filter the reads, taking the unique reads, but yeah. So it's better if you filter, you know, the, the reads that, multi, that maps to multiple lo locations. Yes, that's a good point. 
So, OK, so up to here, we have these uh, binarized trucks. But still, you know, we don't have the chromatin state. So to get the chromatin states and to train a model, actually, we just need another step. So we're almost there. So now we have uh, our, um, we created this folder, right? In the previous step, we, we created this sample data, uh, AG18, right? So here we specify as a, as a last parameter, right, this sample data, AG18. So all the banalized tracks are here. So now this will be like the input for you know, this next step. So now what, what we are doing, we are taking these binary structs. We run you know, the common layer model from Kromich and MEM, and, you, and we will get the model plus the segmentation. Okay? To run this is similar to what we saw before. So we have this uh, uh, Java, blah, 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 Kromich and MEM. Now you see that the command is different. Layer model, and then the input, where you, we, have, we have stored the binarized structs, and the output. Where, we, where do we want to store the final out, output of Chromich and MAME? So this 10 is the number of chromatin states that we want to, to learn. So this number you know, is something that you have to decide depending on you know, how many marks uh, you are inputting. There is no you know, uh, rule. This is something that you have to play a little bit with. For example, if you see too many states that are similar, maybe you know, this number is too big. And finally, you need to specify, the, again, the genome of reference. So after, you know, like if you run in the example, after 10 minutes, and uh, you will see the, the output of the, um, of the, of Chromich and MEM. So now, the nice thing is like they, they create a nice web page report that contain links to all the output files. So, and usually it's, uh, it's called web page underscore n, where n is like the, the number of states that you decide in the previous command. And you will get, you know, these three outputs. The first thing is like the model that, the, that we learn using this Easton, Easton uh, modification that I will show you in a minute. Then reach functional categories. And this is important because you can use this in trying to give, you know, meaningful labels to your state. And finally, the bad files to visualize the segmentation. OK, let's take a look to, to this. So, so this is essentially the, the model that we learned. So this is the table that I showed you before, right? Before we had the labels. So in the output of the commission map, we get just this. We don't have labels. But, but we'll see in the next slide how we can use uh, annotation. So you know, each row, again, is a chromatin state. And the columns are the histone marks that you use. The transition parameters essentially is like, what is the probability if, if I am in, for example, state one to stay, to stay state one or to go to state two and so on. So this is what they call transition in, um, parameters. And you know, this is also another uh, important piece of information. So if you see like the, the state, so now you have another table where you have, again, in the row the states, and the column you have different uh, uh, annotation like CPCI, CPG Island, Exxon, Gymbody, TSS. So, I mean, this will help you a little bit on you know, assigning the state. And this is like a, a meta profile around the TSS of all the genes for each state. So you see like that using uh, you know, this data, it, it, uh, state one and two are more close, you know, to to gene like TSS or to gene body. So probably these are states related to you know promoter or you know what they call elongation. So in terms of the segmentation, so if you look in the output folder of the Chromich and MEM, you have some bad files, and they are you know the the bad file that you need will be something like you know, the cell name, the cell type name that you specified. And then uh, we'll have underscore dense. There are many bad files. So the one that you need to visualize the output are the one that uh, end with underscore dense. And this is in my Word document, so you don't have to remember. 
So now to visualize these trucks, you can uh, uh, upload them on the genome browser. We had a really nice tutorial yesterday on how uh, you can visualize that file on genome browser. Or you know, if you want to uh, visualize in your machine, there is a really nice software from the Broad Institute. It's called IGV that you can uh, um, just download on your machine. And in order to visualize this file, you just open the software, you select the right genome, and then you just drag and drop the, the bed file on this window. And for each cell type, you will see something like this. And you know, again, the colors correspond to the state. And you know, here you have like a track with the, with the gene, and you can load the also other annotation. So do you have any question up to here? Yes. So how long does it take for you to run the Chrome HMM? So, I mean, this depends on how many marks uh, do, you, do you add. And, you know, uh, can be like, you know, for one cell type, usually it's like in one hour it will finish. If you have like five marks in a, in a normal machine, not super fast, in, you know, one hour, two hours. One thing to keep in mind is like if you read the documentation, they just you know, uh, release a new option that is called minus P. That means that you can run using all the cores on your machine. So it will be much faster to run. But yes. So in, in your instructions, you were talking about using this with histone modification data. But this has also been used with TF data. And it should work with any yeah. data, like DNA, or cage, or yeah. anything, right? Yeah, in, in general, it's like a fancy clustering. So whatever you put in, you get, you get you know, a combination of, uh, of you know, states that will be defined based on histone modification plus you know, prescription factor of chromatin. So I'm not sure if this is crazy. So is it possible just, I don't know if the SAS is here. Is it possible we can run this thing on the DNA Nexus, like everything automatically? You just click a few files. Uh, so it gave me the Chrome HMM. I gave yeah. you, five I, I hours later, I gave you HTML. I, I think so. That yeah. is, it can be automatic. Right? Yeah, I think okay. so, because you know, it just need one file. So what they, can, they will do internally, they can create a pipeline where they essentially convert from BAM to BED with BED tools. And then we'll run Chrome HMM, the two steps of Chrome HMM. And then we'll just output the web page. So yeah, it's, it's totally possible. So, so yes. Sorry. So to create your binary files, yes. you said you don't want to just use one cell type. Do you have like a minimum number that you should include to? No, no. Actually, if, if you're interested in just one cell type, you can do that. What I'm saying is like if you want to compare chromatin state in multiple cell types, you want to learn all together. So that's, you know. So you wouldn't want to look at the previous Chrome and compare it to your cell type? You'd want to include so all So if you want to use a previous model, Right? For example, if you want to use the model trained on the epigenomic roadmap, that is a really robust model, then you want to you know, use the same list of marks, the same alignment step, and all the steps that they follow. So then you can just segment your, you know, your new cell type. So that's the way. But if you have, like, I don't know, three or four cell types and you want to learn chromatin state de novo, maybe using some description factor, it's important that you learn all together the model. Otherwise, you will have a different model for each cell type and maybe misleading then, you know, to compare the segmentations. One last question. A uh, very quick one. Uh, so can you go back and comment a little bit on the segmentation? Like you have like yeah. repressed insulators. Uh, what, is, what, what are those different uh, possible outputs? So this, these colors are, you know, in, this is from the paper in, in Nature, like um, chromatic state nine cell lines. So they define this based on, you know, different annotation. So if you run with different marks, you will get probably different labels, right? So, you know, it's not something general that, you know, I can explain now to you. It depends on what you put in, in the model. So I just want to finish, you know, this talk with this, uh, references. So Chrome HMM is not the last uh, model, it's not the unique model to do this. 
there is Segway that is another model, and you know you can run this model. You will get you know single uh, base pair resolution. The only thing is like it's a little bit slower than Chromium Man. Then there is a new method, is Spectacle, that is uh, similar to Chromium Man, but it's much faster because they use uh, spectral learning. And then you know in the lab, uh, in collaboration with Manolis, we are developing an extension of Chromium mm -hmm. Man that essentially try to solve the problem of the resolution. So you can learn uh, um, chromatic state simultaneously at a, a, um, a different resolution. So you have like the nucleosome resolution, but you have also the domain resolution. Because you have, you know, sometimes different patterns at different scales. And I just want to thank, you know, Manolis and Jason for this nice tool. And, you know, I will stop here. Cool. Thanks, Luca. Uh, uh.